have found the dream. On our way to Grand K today, across and we got like 100 miles or so. We're super pumped. Looking for some big hogs, big groupers. It's gonna be a good trip. We'll take you along for the ride. Grand is in the Abacos. It is um, one of the furthest north islands in the Bahamas, so it's got some pretty good diving over there. I think they've been uh, catching some lobster. Fishing World Championship. Sam is crushing it. I just want you guys to know she's crushing it. And look how cool that fish is. Look at the little blue, the blue lines on them are so cool. Is that wicked or what? Nick, how are you doing? I have not cut anything so far. How's your arm? Are you worn out? I'm worn out. I'm done with it. Uh, okay, so Nick was trolling for barracuda, I don't know why. Instead he caught a horse side jack and because the horse side jacks or any jacks travel like a pack of dogs, the other ones won't go away. So now Nick is going to stabby stabby it from the boat. Shoot it in the head. And you don't have any gloves on. Oh. Did I just miss it? Yep. Made it out here to the Bahamas. Nick shot a magnificent hog. That is a freaking beast. Let's go weigh this thing. 12.3. Oh. 12.3. Dude, that's a freaking beast, man. Sam got her first mutton. We got enough lobsters and other hogs for dinner. We're gonna keep diving all week. We'll take you along for the ride. The next morning, we woke up really early and went searching for the legendary cats of Grand K. Get the kitten. What's your name? Say it louder. <laughs> what do you do here? Play on the board. Okay. Sweet. Feed the cats? Yep. <laughs> Some of the fish you speared yesterday? Yeah, I'm pretty happy that, that Sarah went to all these cats. We really, really like cats. Alright. Top baby. Yeah. What? Why are you weak? <gasps> oh my god, We're bringing you kittens. I, have, I got one too. What? You don't even look at me. Do you hear the purse? Yes. So what's up guys? Heading offshore again today. We're going north. We're going to Ryan's spots today. Um, we tried their spots. They were okay. We're gonna, we're gonna go. We're gonna go check out my spots, which I've never actually been to. But um, pretty. I'm pretty good at looking at the chart and the Google satellite, Google Earth. And from there, I can kind of pick out the depth I'm looking for, the reef I'm looking for, anything kind of looks unique and special, and um, and put a ton of marks out on my phone. And then today we'll go out and we'll look at them all and we'll see what happens.
Lobster season in the Bahamas started just days before we arrived, and they were still super thick. I consider them bycatch, and usually stumble upon them by accident while spearfishing. One of the best things about collecting them over there is you can spear them. Just be sure to check for eggs first. Check it out! Do you want to dance? Seventeen point two. Is that your second biggest yellowfin? <laughs> well, Nick is gooping. We know that though. Tell us something we don't know. Camera already knows that. Um, Ryan's fish beat mine by one pound, but mine is definitely the longer. He just hasn't had a meal in a while. There's probably baby sea turtles in that grouper. So you're saying I am a baby sea turtle saver because I have killed the baby sea turtle eater. <laughs> All right, Nick, what are you doing? I'm tying a hogfish carcass Why? on a rope so we can get some sharks to freak out. Hashtag shark week. A little bit. Gotta get that Instagram. After four days of diving, we were exhausted. We decided to stay close to Grand on our last day and then meet up with friends later on the sandbar for a barbecue on the beach. Sam shot the only hogfish of the day and that would later become ceviche. I went down, I saw him all camouflaged in the rock and I just happened to be right next to him so I gave him a little shot. <laughs> a little shot? A little shot. A big stone shot. We are at Double Preston. We might need it. Bahamas, pretty close to Grand Cay where everyone's staying. Love it here. We took Sam's hog from the day, cut it up right there on the beach on top of the cooler, and we made an unbelievable ceviche right there on the beach. Fish we shot today, made up right there on the beach. Bye me, you're welcome. Sam, we're gonna kill that fish. It's pretty incredible. We cut that thing up on the beach, put some juices with it, cut up the hot pepper. Incredible, at the end of a long day, there's just nothing better than eating something you killed. So we're way north off White Sands, up by Matanilla Shoal, off the Bahamas. This is always our favorite day. We're on our way crossing back from Grand, and you basically get one day to hit some of the best reef in the Bahamas. That's this stuff up here. It's like 50 miles from anything. It's really tough to get to. So we got a full day up here today, and we're super stoked about it.
was filming Matt as he lined up on this big yellowfin grouper. He had a really nice shot on it, but unfortunately when I pulled it out of the hole, the slip tip pulled. I was right there, I loaded up my spear, and I was able to get an awesome second shot in this fish. I really, really like yellowfin grouper. I don't know why, maybe it was because me and Sam for a while both shared the world record for him, but I get stoked every single time I see him. What a cool freaking fish. All the way down there, he was so far inside that hole. It was all the way inside of there. Had the spear like wedged up in a U. Just shoved it forward, took the shot. I was I was deep in that hole, that was pretty incredible. But uh, got an awesome shot, in and out. Sea Stinger Spirit did his job. And now we got dinner. <laughs> what an epic end to a trip. So we had an unbelievable crossing yesterday. We came back from Grand. It was flat, it was glass, it was sunset. We killed so many fish all day long. And then we found the dream. Look at that. We have found the dream. We saw it from far away. And honestly, we turn, I was like, you gotta turn the music down. You gotta turn the VHF up because that looks like a submarine. Buoy broken loose, a lot, oh lot of line on it. God. Mahi all over the boat. All we've got on board are pole spears. This is gonna be epic. We pulled up to it and it was a buoy with 50 feet of chain and more life on it than I've ever seen in my life. Sharks all the way up through the water column. Millions of these small Almaco jacks. Mahis everywhere hitting the surface. It was incredible. Bite the end of your pole for your bite your band. And my second time ever shooting Mahi was definitely my favorite blue water experience. I whiffed on one that was probably pushing 40 pounds. It was incredible. It was an incredible way to end the trip. At this point in my spiritual career, I tend to like judge myself pretty hard, not on necessarily the fish that I land, but almost more on the fish that I miss. I take that as kind of like a big learning opportunity. Like that's what that's what really sticks out to me after after these trips. It's not all the ones that I landed, but those couple that I didn't, that I should have, that I really wanted to, and I kind of really look back on the mistakes that I made and try and figure out how to do better next time. I mean there was one black grouper that was big. It was the biggest one we saw the whole trip. It was deep, it was in like 75 feet followed it over to this cave, and it was a pretty big cave system, but I could see it went in and it tucked his little head back out. And I went way behind it, and I crawled up, and I had my spear, and I was right over, and I could see his lips there, and I was trying to get it up over him, and I don't know who flinched first. I don't know if I shot or if he twitched, but maybe it was the same exact instant, but I shot, and he moved, and it went right past where his head was. And, um, and that was a big fish, that was a 60 plus pound fish. It would have been an amazing hunt. And um, it's fish like that that really stick out in my mind. And I try to figure out how I could have done that better, how I could have approached it better. Um, to not make those mistakes next time. My favorite fish though was my little tiny black grouper. He was, I followed him into his little like under a ledge. I went down and I laid on the bottom. I grunted a little bit to kind of keep him interested. And when he turned, I kind of like take a mental stop in my head to relax myself and I took my shot and I stoned him perfectly. Doing the deep diving was great because it was a learning experience and that was one of the main things we went over was to learn. Uh, but I enjoyed the company and I have to tell you, you know, um, Sam and Ryan are a great crew, they're fun to have around um, and they're really good on the boat. You know, we went over all as friends and everyone helped out, everyone works hard. They care about the environment, they care about the people. They care about cats. They care about cats. Did I tell you they care about cats? <laughs>
Thank you so much, Nick and Matt Bailey, for taking us on this trip. It's unbelievable. It was such a treat to get over there for once and just kill fish. No agenda, no rush, no clients, no work, nothing. Like, we just wake up whenever we woke up, we'd go out, we'd do a full day diving, and uh, we'd come back and we'd eat and we'd clean and, uh, and we'd share it together. So, um, that was incredible. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you next time. Thank you guys so much for watching. We work really hard on these videos, so if you liked it at all, go ahead and push that like button and leave a comment down below. If you're not subscribed, you know, do that now because we just moved to Hawaii, bought a car, rented a little house in the woods, and we got a bunch more videos in the works for you. Ecuador, California, and Hawaii all coming at you in the next few weeks. Stay tuned.